Do you think that creating amazing sounding reverb takes years to master? Think again. By the end of this video, and with a few simple reverb tweaks, your Logic Pro tracks are gonna sound way better. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what these super easy tricks are, how you can easily implement them in your songs today, and how to do it all within Logic Pro with no paid plugins. So when I first started to implement these tricks into my mixes, they actually started to take off. My friends started saying, hey, you're actually getting pretty good. And when I say friends, I just mean my wife, Anne. Thanks, Anne. So open up your most recent Logic Pro project. I want your friends to be saying the same thing about your music too, and or wives. But after every trick, I'm gonna be leveling up, so it's a good idea to watch the tips in order. Have you ever tried watching a movie or like reading a book and you're on the couch, but you can't because there is an annoying fly buzzing around the room. It's so distracting, it takes your mind off everything because of that darn fly. Choosing the wrong reverb and making it too loud can be equally as distracting for the listener as that darn fly. The first trick that most beginners don't know is to use your reverbs, but very subtly. A good rule of thumb is for them to be audible, but not distracting. Think of them like salt on your French fries. A little bit brings out the flavor and keeps you picking up those golden potatoes, but too much salt, and it's just like, now I don't want them. So let's look at an example of a lead vocal I have here. Let's focus on this wetness dial for a second. Think of the wetness dial as how much reverb you should be adding to the track. No wetness equals no reverb. 100% wetness equals a lot of reverb. For most of my students learning logic, this is how I hear reverb. Holding hands underneath the stars, I can't believe we've come so far. Time stands still when I'm with you, with you, with you. Now take a quick listen to how the reverb should actually sound. Holding hands underneath the stars, I can't believe we've come so far. Time stands still when I'm with you, with you, with you. Now you may have noticed that I put the reverb directly on the track itself as a plugin insert. So should you use reverb on an aux track? Yes, you should. Not all the time, but there are solid benefits in doing so. Let me show you why. Let's look at an example of adding a room reverb on an aux track to the drums. So really keep a close attention on this trick because it's gonna lay the foundation for all the future tricks. I stand still when I'm with you, with you, with you. Now that we have this aux track, we can take some or all tracks and add a little bit of reverb to each one. Stand still when I'm with you, with you, with you. This is really productive because it only takes a few seconds to do so for each track. For example, I could add some kick drum to the room reverb, or I could add some snare track to the room reverb, maybe some synth or guitar too. This allows instruments to share the same space, which helps the sound come together. So now let's take this a step further and let me show you the third trick, which is absolutely mind blowing for me and opened up a whole new world of potential in my reverbs. I literally could have been one of the biggest game changers for me and it was like a definite aha moment. Think of this room reverb as a separate track, or in other words, think of this room reverb as a separate instrument. So just like how you would add an audio track and start singing your lead vocal, this reverb track is a separate track with its own volume and effects too. And because this track is independent from other tracks, we can EQ it differently and add reverb and all these other things to it. I had no idea that you could EQ your reverb. And I also had no idea how much reverb can muddy your mixes until you EQ them. Let's take another example here. Let's look at the lead vocal and add another bus track with a hall reverb. So now we have two tracks. One track is the lead vocal and the other track is the hall reverb. I can now shape the frequencies of the hall reverb track so that my mix is clean. For instance, I can add a low cut to remove any mud, or I can add a high cut frequency to remove maybe some harshness. Holding hands underneath the stars, I can't believe we've come so far. Time 
stand still when I'm with you, with you, with you. It's not always necessary to do this all the time. However, it's a tool in your tool belt to use when you need to clean things up. We saw that we could add an EQ and that was super helpful knowing how we can clean things up. But what about adding other plugins? One of my favorite things to do on a lead vocal is to add a delay before a reverb. This can create a huge amount of space behind a vocal to add an interesting spatial dimension. You can also continue to add any number of plugins that you want to achieve your desired sound. Want your reverb to sound more gritty? Add some distortion to it. Want it to sound brighter? Add a high shelf EQ. Want it to sound flanged? Add a flanger. So let's take an example of adding that delay before the reverb and then maybe making it a bit brighter too and then cleaning it up with an EQ. Holding hands underneath the stars, I can't believe we've come so far. Time stands still when I'm with you, with you, with you. Holding hands underneath the stars, I can't believe we've come so far. Time stands still when I'm with you, with you, with you. Sounds awesome, right? I love the way that sounds. So now let's go up another level and take up these tricks even further. If you're just meeting us here in the video, you might wanna start back at trick number one because we've built up a lot of knowledge until this point. This trick is gonna introduce an enormous amount of space and depth into your song. It's one of the things a lot of beginners miss out on because it's very subtle, but has just enormous benefits to your music. So let's take our synth and send it to a new aux track with a reverb on it. Let's choose a hall reverb at 100%. I'm going to bounce this aux track down to an audio track. I can do that by pressing Shift Option B. So here's what that reverb track actually looks like in audio. I can go a step further to create, shape, add plugins, and edit this reverb track to any desired sound that I like. Essentially what I'm trying to do here is create my own unique reverb pad that I can use anywhere in my songs to create atmosphere and depth. Here's an example of what that could sound like. I love the sound of that so much because it's also taking something that's already in your song. So you have that glue that's already there. So let's get on to trick number six, which is by far the easiest trick. Thank God, something easy. It takes about one or two seconds to implement and I'm serious about that, but a lot of beginners just never use it. Why? It's simply not to use reverb. When I first started, I thought that everything had to use reverb and that's just, Simply not true. Reverb is a mixing tool and one of its functions are to push things back in a mix. So the opposite is equally true. Sometimes if you want something to be really upfront in the mix, you can just leave it dry. However, keep in mind, all sounds have natural reverb on it and recorded on the microphone. So for example, if you're recording in a room, you're gonna record the reverb in the room. I'm gonna show you this super cool hybrid technique now that I like to use in my lead vocals. And I've used this on a ton of tracks that I've released with over millions of streams. So I like to have my lead vocal to have very little reverb, almost dry. Holding hands underneath the stars, I can't believe we've come so far. Time However, I would have a large spatial reverb or delay behind it, which helps glue to the mix, but also provides another dimension to the track. Because as you know now, you're adding more tracks when you're adding reverb on aux tracks. So have a listen to what this sounds like. Holding hands underneath the stars, I can't believe we've come so far. Time stands still when I'm with you, with you, with you. Man, so awesome. Just love that. Try removing some reverb on your tracks right now and listen to how that feels. Remember, not everything needs reverb. Okay, now let's get on to trick number seven, which is a behemoth 
monster of a trick. In this trick, we'll be using something called automation, which gives us the flexibility to actually automate things as our song plays in real time. So let's look at an example. So let's say I have a desired sound in my chorus that I'd like to be different from my verses. I'd like the chorus to have a bigger reverb. In this case, we would automate the reverb. I know it sounds like we're going to start coding something, but trust me, it's much easier than it sounds. Let's head over to our lead vocal and add the desired reverb that we would like in our chorus. Once we've chosen this reverb, we need to tell Logic Pro when to turn this on, and we would do that through automation. Press A, this opens up automation. Go to your lead vocal track, click on the drop down box, and navigate to your aux track, which is nested in main. Now, click in to generate a line. Think of this line as the on off button to your aux track. Notice when I drag the line down, it's muted. We want it muted for our entire song except the chorus. So it would look something like this. Now, this aux track will only turn on when I get to the chorus. Holding hands underneath the stars, I can't believe we've come so far. Time stands still when I'm with you, with you, with you. La la la. We can also automate the EQ of the reverb. We can automate the wetness, the style of reverb. You can automate anything you'd like. Putting these reverb tricks into practice is going to help you glue your mix and sound like one cohesive unit. But unfortunately, you still need to learn how to master the ins and outs of Logic Pro to create polished sounding music. That's why you need to watch this video right here, which will break down my simple Logic Pro formula for creating release ready songs time and time again. It's just the exact same formula I use every time I release a song. So go check it out.